Hello. Hello. Starting off the news this week, surgeons in Australia have rewired nerves in a previously paralysed patient's body, allowing them to use previously unusable arms and hands. The doctors say that they can now feed themselves, put on makeup, turn a key, handle money and type at a computer, although the ability to function normally has not returned. Patients that had this treatment still had movement in some muscles in the upper arm, leading to these clearly functioning nerves being rewired and attached to nerves that had control over other muscles. However, because the surgeons are rewiring nerves that would move different muscles to the ones they are wired to, patients have to change the way they think about moving different muscles. For example, a patient might want to extend their fingers, but instead have to think about rotating their hand. And in the world of paleontology this week, we first welcome a brand new genus and species of theropod dinosaur from the late Triassic rocks of Switzerland. Called Notatesoriraptor fricanensis, this dinosaur is unusual since not a lot is generally known about early European theropods due to the incomplete nature of their fossils. However, this specimen was very well preserved. Preserving an almost fully intact skull, articulated forelimbs and even stomach contents, this specimen can tell us a lot about the animal. It has been classified as an early diverging neotheropod placed somewhere along the line leading to Avera strands. In more human paleontological news this week, a study published in the journal Nature has detailed the remains of the oldest modern human found outside of Africa. There were two discoveries of human remains from a cave in Greece, however one of these is a Neanderthal from much earlier. The other belongs to a Homo sapien and is around 210,000 years old. The theory behind these two different remains is that there is a group of early modern humans that occupied lands in Greece at the time that these remains were dated to, but were replaced by Neanderthals tens of thousands of years later. It has only been recently understood that Homo sapiens left the continent of Africa earlier than previously believed. Also this week, we welcome another new dinosaur species, this time a troodontid paravian from the late Jurassic Morrison Formation of Wyoming. The specimen includes a partial skull as well as a fair amount of postcranial material, and it's been found that this was definitely a ground-dwelling animal. The study analysing the new species, named Hespiornithodes miesleri, found support for the hypothesis that all groups of early Paravians were ancestrally flightless. Which brings up the possibility that flight in avians began as late as the late Jurassic or early Cretaceous. And finally, a fascinating paper has been published that examines an exceptionally preserved late Cretaceous dinosaur nesting site from Mongolia. Interestingly, there is evidence that the dinosaurs here, which were likely non-avian theropods, were actually displaying colonial nesting behaviour, something that has been inferred in many extinct dinosaur groups. All the eggs in the 15 clutches found were laid at about the same time, and it seems they were probably incubated by being buried or covered with something. The researchers also found that the successful hatching rate of the eggs was high, and was similar to that of living crocodilians and birds that look after their nests during incubation, suggesting that this sort of colonial nesting and parental attendance had evolved in non-avian dinosaurs that didn't brood. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science, and thank you as always to everyone who keeps sending news in our Discord server, it helps us out a lot. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already to learn more about this world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds you. And if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.